Here's another thing I want to go. Let's go, let's go to this article here. Most millennials and Gen Z are hiding their spending habits from their partners. Many consider this worse than physical cheating. Milton, you're in a relationship. She's got her bank account. You've got her, your bank account. Do you disclose to her how you spend your money? Um, I think if, if we're in a relationship and we're going to wait, uh, wait towards marriage or to, towards an actual commitment within itself, I think a conversation about finances is definitely a conversation that we should have up front. Because, again, I've been on both sides of the spectrum where uh, I was in my early 20s, a lot of student loan debt, working two jobs, part-time jobs, trying to get through college, broke. Yeah. And here comes a pretty girl. I didn't have my principles, my values in line. So I do everything that I possibly can to grab her attention, even yeah. if it was taking her out to expensive dinners that I could not afford and falling behind on my phone bill just because I wanted to impress her and I'd be okay with a uh, late phone sure, bill. Hey, I've been, I've been on that side. Yeah, for sure. You know, and then I've been on the opposite side as well where you know they, they play the same role. I, I, I think that a, having a conversation of your finances up, up front and set, you know, setting expectations is definitely something that uh, is definitely needed, especially if you're trying to plan a future with someone. Going into an actual commitment within itself, Matthew, I, I, I do think that um, you know, a man having his own account, a woman having her own account, and then if they decide to go that route of an actual full-on commitment aka marriage, yeah. then creating something together so that way they can both put in a certain amount of money into that account so they, they can grow their legacy together. Yeah. You know, so that way he has an, his account and he use, he utilizes that money for what he wants and she has her money so she can buy, do whatever she wants to do with her money. So that way, whether it's man or woman, she doesn't feel the obligation just because she's a breadwinner, she doesn't feel the obligation to be the one consistently providing and vice versa. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't have to feel like he's the one consistently providing. Does that make sense? Yeah. By the way, if you're dating... Yeah. Do you have 100% trust? I say, hey, babe, give me your phone. Do you, do you hand over the phone? Right now? If you're dating. Yeah. And you're dating to marry. The, the last time. Do you hand over the phone? <laughs> yeah. The, you do. The, the, you feel comfortable. <laughs> yeah, 1,000%. Oh, the last time I was in a, rela- in a serious relationship was in 2017. That was, uh, that, was, that was the last time I was in a serious relationship. From that point forward, I've dated. You mm-hmm. know, got, you know, got to know somebody within five, six, seven months. It didn't work. So yeah. we just continue down our own paths. But an actual commitment was 2017. At, at the point where I'm at right now, it's really hard for my attention to be grasped onto just because of your looks. I, I need to know who you are. I want to know, you know what you stand for, where, you, where, where, you, where are you rooted. And if I decide to, to entertain the, the idea of a relationship, then that's where I myself yeah. am in a position where I'm open to cutting off everything and any distraction that may come my way, including anything that's on social yeah. media. So that gives me the open door to say, hey, babe, here's my phone. Do as you please. Here's my passport. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, because that's like saying, hey, look at my checking account. And this is where I spend money. Yeah. I'm at the GNC Nutrition. I'm at Vitamin Shop. I'm at Amazon, whatever. Yeah. I'm at uh, you know, buying Under Armour clothes because you're a trainer, right? That's, yeah. your, that's your world. But listen, when, when Sheena and I started dating, I remember going to an Italian restaurant. And there was a Italian restaurant. You can have like the, 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 the paper, you know, the paper, uh, I guess, tablecloths. Yeah. I just wrote down all my mess with Sheena. Or blah, 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 because I was going through... Blended family sh- situation there. She needed to know my mess. She needed to know my luggage. She needed to know my garbage. Also, wow. she needed to know the, the upside. With the risk of potentially losing Loser. her. So you, but, just, you just brought it up? You I just, just brought it up. I hey, said, she know this was going on in my life. Let me just write it out for you. Yeah, I said, I need to have a conversation with you because the shit I was in was getting thicker. Wow. And I didn't want to drag her down deeper and get her hooked into the relationship. And next, you know, I'm not the guy that she thought she had in her head. So, I, babe, is this continuing? I just need to disclose to you before this gets any deeper. Maybe that's about three, four, five, six months into the, the, the relationship. It wasn't right away. It's not, it was the first date. Yeah, that would have been intense. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, four, five, six months, and she kind of got a, an idea of who I was. But listen, I, I, th- I think if you're in a relationship, I think you're right. It should be uh, our money, your money, my money. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever you do with your money, your business, whatever I do with money is our business, but we have our money together. And I think if you're unwilling to have that type of financial disclosure or transparency, you're hiding a lot of other shit in your life too as well. And so that you're just going to be setting yourself up for failure. Um, and if you put yourself in a position where you're like, you know, I really love this woman. We're going to really build a future mm-hmm. together. It's one, you know, she has her budget. You have your budget, but we have our budget. Yeah. And uh, as long as our budget, our bills are paid for, good to go. And, uh, and quite frankly, I'm glad I married a woman that is conservative in her spending. You know, Sheena, and on her wedding day, I, I said, I said, hey, babe, listen, I, I'm, I apologize. I'm not the guy that's going to give you the woman of your jeans. A lot of these girls are dreaming from, the, from, you know, being a princess, you know, on a horse-driven carriage. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not going to provide that. She goes, I don't care, babe. She goes, I don't care about spending money on the wedding. I care about investing in her wow. marriage. That's rare nowadays, Matthew. That's, that's Sheena. That's really rare that's nowadays. That's my wife. I was like, holy moly. That's bold. really rare. And then her wedding dress, she goes, babe, I got it on sale. I'm thinking three, four, five thousand dollars for a dress. She goes, babe. Two hundred bucks. Two hundred. 
Her wedding dress. Her our, our, our anniversary is coming here in, se in seven days, six days. Her wedding dress. We'll post it on Instagram. Her wedding dress was a couple hundred bucks. She bought it on sale, clearance. She goes, I'm very, I'm wearing it one time. I was talking to a, uh, to, to a young lady that I was uh, entertaining not maybe a couple years ago, and this woman said that her minim the minimum that she wants to spend on a wedding was 20 grand. Minimum. Your wife said, what's the point? Your wife said two hundred dollars for a wedding dress. That's really rare to find nowadays, Matthew. Because you think if you, it, women, you know, you know that saying that women have a biological clock. They want to yeah. be married by a certain time yeah. because of you know sure, sure. Be, not being able to have kids. But I believe that men have a financial clock. They will not settle and they will not sit there and commit to someone until they have their finance completely set. That's why you see a lot of men just elongating the process, being in relationships with someone for more than four, five, six years, and still not popping the question because they still have not uh, settled themselves in in the purpose that they want to fulfill and especially have the bank account that they want to have. But it's really hard to do that when you have a partner who doesn't know how to budget their money. Yeah, but by the way, I think it's stupid just to spend money on a wedding, just to say you spent the money on the wedding. Yeah. For what? One big-ass glorified party? For what? And then what happens? You start off the marriage with damn debt. debt. You're, you got financial burden. You get regret. They, we should have never invited this person. <laughs> <laughs> right? Why they come? They brought all their kids, right? All their you know, people I haven't seen in years. Yeah. What's the point of spending all their money on a wedding? You want to invest in the marriage. And so by putting yourself in a, in a burden from day one, and everybody's stressing out. Parents are stressing out. Mom's yeah. stressing out. You're asking for people to contribute. Everybody's financially stressed out. What? Just so you can have a party? And then if it's not built on values and principles, it was just built on the, the aesthetics of a wedding, guess what? A year later, two years later, three years later, what happens to that marriage? Boom, divorced. You spend all the money for what? What a ridiculous way to look at getting married because you got to spend all this money because you have a quota that you need to meet. I'd, I'd say, listen, maybe three years later, four years later, five years, have a rededication ceremony. Rededication. And you celebrate then. When you make your bread, you make your money together. Here's what happened to my financial trajectory as soon as I got married because I focused on one woman with all the riffraff to the side, wasn't running game. She's not running game. We're not spending any money on any, any stupid things any longer. Guess what happened to our financial tra trajectory? Bam! If you track the day we got married from uh, uh, February 2015 to, to where we are today, over $10.5 million was generated our way because we focused in on our marriage, our business. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.